Hey guys, uh, so this is the new Tesla uh, 100D. It's like an iPhone on wheels. Um, so the car works on a battery. Um, there tells you the range as well in the car. And uh, it's pretty much like a toy basically. It's like a, it's like a joystick, but it's really appealing because uh, you're being green and you're not paying a single dime for petrol. You charge uh, the car in 25 to 50 minutes, depending on how much you've uh, burnt the battery. Uh, but you get eight years of warranty. There's no servicing involved and uh, all you have to care is for your tires and just a bit of fluid in the front. And this car is awesome. And uh, basically this car is on P right now. Um, whenever you drive, it's literally an auto hold because there's no active engine running. You don't actually have to hold the brake down. If you actually press the D button and if I leave the brake right now, it's not gonna move. And you have to command the car to move forward by pressing into the accelerator as the car moves forward. And then we, uh, there's only a couple of buttons here. So another thing to explain about the dash is that um, I'll go back into P for now. Um, here we are, we have this amazing touchscreen display. It controls everything. The controls of the car are part of the thing. Uh, the cool part is that you can drop the suspension. The low uh, option is quite low, so it gets you close to a Porsche low. And uh, then we have the driving options. Um, you can go for the steering modes. It's just uh, getting the weighting of the steering. When, you, when it's in comfort, it feels like an S-Class. When it's in sport, it feels like a little bit like a Porsche. And uh, creep mode, that's something to understand. Uh, so creep mode is kept there just for users to still feel comfortable to a car. And uh, with the whole catch is that if creep mode is off, it feels like a Tesla. When creep mode is on, it feels like a regular car. So if you hold the brake down, the car will not move. But if you leave the brake, it will start moving. It'll keep the battery active to keep some energy going so you feel like a normal car. But I preferably keep the creep off because I want to get used to the future of technology, which is battery-based cars, where you command the car to move by pressing into the accelerator and so forth. And uh, regenerative braking is a very cool part where um, it stays on standard. As you leave the accelerator, when you get to signal, so the whole cool part of the regen braking is that um, it helps you slow down the car actively by not using the brakes, helps increasing the life of your brake pads. You'll never have to use your brakes ever again. And the regen uh, warranty is also around eight to 10 years. So it's always regaining you energy and uh, it's, being, it's all about being green and not using your brake pads. Um, and there's also a range mode that helps lower the AC down, just like you'd see in a Honda, for example, in Econ mode, but it works much better. And uh, we have trips here. Uh, trips basically keep telling you what how you did on your previous trips and it's an like a, a technical like uh, saving of an odometer and it just uh, keeps going like every other car and we have uh, displays and control the brightness of your display pretty much control this whole uh, 22 inch TV <laughs> and then we have the e-brake which is uh, a car park brake if you wanted to keep it on to go on inclines if you needed something like that but other than that um, it's very simple you can control some settings you can add new profiles for drivers for seating purposes as in every other car there's, uh, there's a couple of options in the settings. Uh, you can change the language, uh, you can change the, the metrics you're using and uh, so on and so forth. Doors and locks, mirror auto tilting, something that you see in regular cars as well, safety and security. There's, there's tons of stuff going on here and uh, a lot of options to tamper with. Um, so yeah, it's something to look into online as well. And the cool part is charging, for example. You can you get to see the display up and charging. Whenever you're sitting in one of the Tesla charge stations, it takes only 25 to 40 minutes to charge your car from pretty much 10% of battery life to the 80 that's allowed. It's always good to keep your battery life to the guided 80. It's, it extends the battery life rather than pushing it to 100% completely. That's what's recommended by Tesla. And you can open the charge port from the corner, which I'll talk about in, in a bit. And uh, there's scheduled charging that it would recommend you to warn you about. And if you have a referral from a customer who's already owned a car, you'll be not paying anything at all for charging. As it says, zero dollars completely. And um, you got tons of stuff. It's, uh, it's a full-on uh, Android kind of So yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing. So you get the music system here. It's got the coolest thing more I want to explain to you. You get free internet for the rest of your life. So basically, once you buy this car, you're getting free LTE. It's not for streaming videos. They give you data for streaming music. It's mainly sold with Spotify. So they've Tesla spotted up with Spotify. It will be on in the UAE in the next two weeks. And we have TuneIn, which is already on. So you get to listen to all these variety of channels from around the world, India, USA, Australia, everything that you know. And you also get podcasting as well. And you can control your phone as you go if you want to get Bluetooth music. Uh, as you get in every car, but the main, the main appealing point of this car is the internet connection, which gives you that um, free GPS, you get heads on navigation, you get a full screen of navigation, which is beautiful. And uh, you also get uh, the music services and uh, everything you get on the phone, a calendar to remind you for your meetings. Uh, there's the browser. If you are getting bored somewhere, you wanted to stream the internet, do not watch YouTube videos, they will stop the connection. <laughs>
So yeah, we got the rare camera as well, and it tells you like you get to see everything behind you, and you just you know something you'd see in regular cars as well. But the appeal of the platform is amazing. It's on a massive display. You get to control a lot of things, and yeah, it's just great. And then the phone is connected as well. Um, I guess I'm steaming. Uh, so is Nasser. I'm just gonna turn on the AC. <laughs> So the AC is going to start now. You can control the AC just by hitting custom and you can uh, control the speed of the AC just like in a regular car. That's a cool button. It's called HEPA filter. HEPA filter. So it's basically a biodegradable um, filter that runs and sort of keeps biotoxins out of your car. So it's a really neat, I would say, gimmick in a way. So it's never in the case that you would come in a nuclear explosion or somewhere that you would actually have to hit that button well, and keep yourself. The, the UAE, yeah. yeah, you would actually have to keep clean air in your car. Dust stuff. Right? Exactly. So it's basically indoor AC and it just looks really fancy. So that's the appeal to the big touchscreen. And uh, as always, you get this massive internet connection, and you can also. So the whole idea is that you get LTE here. You can create it on hotspot, and uh, it's amazing. You're getting free internet, but just not to stream videos because. Mr. Elon Musk will block it. <laughs> so you get Bluetooth as well. You can connect your phone, add devices to it. And not just necessarily phones, also laptops and whatnot. And uh, you get to set your profiles from here, control it. It's me and my dad so far, and there's a valet mode. So that the interesting part of the valet mode is that it controls how your car runs with the valet. He's not allowed to punch it too much or get that 3.9 second effect. Uh, from 100 but it's really appealing and you have home link as always if you are uh, living in a villa and you are from uh, the states for example you'd, you'd you'd be really used to that option by now or in the UAE as well if people are using home link here and yeah it's pretty much that and the cool uh, lock button because that, that the appeal to that car is basically it closes the door handles and the car looks really slick and there's no air drag from the handles whatsoever and uh, it's a it's a great car altogether and now we're gonna have our for a drive for like five minutes uh, amazing feature part of this is this, this car is built in with nine functional 360 degree cameras so the benefit of these cameras is that if I wanted to move to an autopilot package which I did not purchase because I feel like I don't need it because uh, I'm gonna drive and enjoy this car rather than having work like a robot um, so the appeal is that if I go close to a car very very close to a car it's gonna actually warn me about how close I go so as I get closer and closer and closer it's gonna warn me about the centimeters how close I am so that appeal shows me exactly how close I am to my car and when I should back out, as if I'm in a very tight spot when I'm going around, coming out of a parking and whatnot. And yeah, it's uh, it's a great platform altogether. Um, I'm gonna wear my seat belts now. And uh, the whole, so is Nasser as well. <laughs> so the appeal is quite straightforward. Uh, this car is the car of the future. Uh, you're getting uh, a lot of features in pack. Um, the per best price being uh, decent range. Um, during the heat, uh, you're getting more like 440 kilometers on a full charge. And uh, as it gets colder, as you'll hit November in the UAE, it'll go somewhere around like 560, 550, which I believe is good enough to go to, from here to Sharjah or, or Fujairah. And um, so far, as charging stations have started in, uh, uh, you could see it on the maps uh, or you could Google it as well. There's charging stations uh, in, um, uh, what you call it? Uh, there's charging stations in uh, Mazdar city and uh, in uh, last exit. But there'll be more coming along as well um, as we go. And uh, pardon me for that. And you can see the maps and the charging stations so far. There's two in the UAE and there'll be more coming as we go. Well, it usually takes uh, 25 to 45 minutes to charge. It's a great car to use. And uh, Mazdar city is one option. Uh, you'll have to go in the far corner of Mazdar city, but it, they've built it like last exit pretty much. There's two cafes there. and. Uh, Last exit has like six cafes, but you'll get to charge. And when you're charging your car, you can just sit and keep the AC on. And uh, the car is really cold and uh, you can just uh, chillax, use your laptop, relax and uh, do other things. If you'd like to watch a movie, uh, you can do that as well. Um, in the future, they'll be adding a feature into the Tesla where you can actually just uh, uh, pretty much connect your phone to the car and just to, like play videos when you're at a stop sign, like, you know, basically. Yep. Or just uh, at P. Yeah. <laughs> So um, I'm stopping at a stop sign right now. I'm going to be showing Nasser how this car charges and everybody who's watching. The whole appeal of this car is uh, how quickly uh, you can get about places and how quick it is and how quickly you can charge it. And uh, if you wanted to get the P100D, is it the ultimate car for you? How realistic is it to use a 0-100 to 2.3 second car on the street? When are you going to ever take it to this track? Because this car is a great car. It drives really fast. It's meant for the perfect grand tour but it's not a track car so you never end up using the 0 to 100 in 2.3 seconds on the street unless you want to get caught by the cops so i recommend if you wanted the proper range 
and uh, get the right car, get the 100D. Do not buy the P100D. Unless you are a speed fanatic and you don't care about the range, then go for the P. Uh, it's a 0 to 100 in 2.3. It's a 0 to 103.9. I, I still think it's enough for me. And I want the extra 40 kilometers of range. So guys, I'm going to teach you how to use the Tesla key, which is really fancy. Um, so if you were standing to the car, the car would still keep its door handles open for you to get in. But if you would like to lock it, technically you have to just double click on the, on the, on the, butt, on the center of the top of the key. And it would basically lock the car for you, basically in a single lock and double click to open it okay? um, and uh, if you double click the back of the key it's going to open the boot for you automatically and uh, if you wanted to close at the same time you could do so by double clicking again and uh, let's go to the front as well that's how it works in the front as well if you double click the front uh, it's going to open the front but since this front is made from aluminum just like every other Porsche you're supposed to open it delicately and then see small boot space that you'd get in a regular Porsche uh, just about the same size because there's no engine you get it at the back end and the front and uh, we have to close it very gently always remember that you have to keep it down and since it's based on aluminum you have to slowly push it down just like you're doing a portion so guys if you wanted to ever charge your car uh, on the go um, where is the charging port you're supposed to hold the back of the car's key for five seconds five four three two sort just That opens the charging port right there. Um, if you were not charging anything, if you just wanted to close the flap, you could just by touching it and it would close automatically. And then I'm gonna open that again. Four, three, two, one. And what you have to do is that you have to connect the big charging cable that you would get, a get at a charging station and hook it up in. And it's gonna show you a green sign here. When that thing goes green, that means it started charging. And uh, if you press the lock button once, it's gonna lock the, 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 sock, uh, the cable back into the, uh, into the car. So if you're going away from the car, um, even if you don't press the lock button, it'll automatically lock as well. So unless you're next to the car, you are holding the key and pulling out the socket, it will stay locked inside. So that's the benefit of leaving your car while it's being. So guys, these are uh, the charging cables that you get with the car. It comes in a fancy Tesla bag uh, that says Tesla. And uh, you get the regular reports. If you were using, say, um, an older car, you could move to an older uh, wall connector that you would get in a house for the P90D or P85D. Or if you wanted to charge at a local um, power outlet that you would use to charge your phone, uh, you also get a connector for that as well from Tesla. It's got the three pins, which is the top ones for grounding. And uh, then we have, uh, if you have that connected into a regular power outlet, which would give you a basic 240 volt range, you're looking at somewhere around uh, 10 kilometers of power per hour that you charge. If you were to charge at a supercharger, like I mentioned earlier, it would be 25 to 40 minutes. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, it's the fun part. And if you wanted to buy a, a wall station for your house, uh, you actually have to contact Tesla. It will go into your apartment building, the underground parking. Oh, that just closed out now. And uh, then it would basically be either that or no. So basically the charging just starts, uh, if you wanted to get a wall connector for your house, you're looking at around like uh, somewhere around uh, 80 uh, kilowatt hour power that you would get. And it would technically means that you would charge around sort of 25 to 40 minutes your car would be charged in more like around four to five hours. So that would be the home connection that would use overnight. That's the best way to use it. So the future of Tesla, Tesla depends on you charging your car in, at home. So they don't have to enforce the fact that they would have to install a lot of Tesla stations around the world like a petrol station. They do provide that already in the United States. They will be providing more of them in the UAE as business goes for them here. And uh, the whole appeal being that the future of cars is where you charge your car at your home, just like you charge your phone. Head out to wherever you go to and get back home and you can still use your car. So you're not bound to going to a charging station all the time or going to a petrol station to fill fuel where you can charge at your home. That's the appeal of and evolution of Tesla. So guys, uh, there's two ways to get about this. Either use the remote to open the car like that if you wanted to. Um, or you could close it with the remote as well uh, So guys, there's another point to point out with this car which is the biggest factors of all You get eight years of warranty ten years of uh, battery Which is your engine life warranty and nothing really goes wrong with the car in terms of servicing You never have to service it again washer fluids and tires only and uh, the thing is that if you really like this car You can keep it for two decades if you want to Tesla offers an option where in the future you can take this car keep the shell They'll just upgrade the battery pack for you and you'll have a 150d Maybe go from 0 to 100 in 2 seconds. 
faster than a Bugatti, you never know.